Hey guys, welcome back. So today I've been out here working in the orchard. This is my second day trying to get the orchard pruned and it's, I think it's gonna take me a few more days, several hours to get this pruned. It's such a big task nowadays that now that the trees are so much bigger and more mature. But uh, what I wanna do today with you guys is I've got two fruit trees that we're gonna replace today. I've got a dead cherry tree and then I've got an apple tree that's not actually dead, but it is rotting on the tree trunk. And instead of, basically half the tree is dead. And instead of delaying the inevitable, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tear that tree out of the ground and we're going to replace both of those. We've got a new Fuji apple and we've got a new Van cherry tree. No, it's a Bing, Bing cherry tree to plant here in the orchard. So this tree was a Royal Rainier cherry tree, sweet cherry tree. This was one of our original trees as well. And it struggled, it almost died the first year we planted it. And it really struggled for several years. And you can tell it's just not, it's not very big uh, for being six years old. And last year after it put the cherries on, all of the, uh, the leaves just started to wilt and it just started to die away. And it just died early summer last year. So we're gonna put, we're gonna dig this one up and replace it with a Bing cherry tree instead. So here's a quick comparison. This is a Van cherry tree, and it was planted a year after the, that dead cherry tree over there. And this tree has just grown so much taller and so much bigger than the other one. And Rebecca said these cherries tasted the best. So hopefully the Bing cherry tree that we're planting today, hopefully it does as good as this Van cherry tree has for us. We're, we're gonna try to dig it up. This may not, this may not go very well. Hopefully since it's dead. I like your technique. Use the tree for... I was thinking of your bunny hop on the shovel. Might go. Keep going. All right. You have to move it the other, other way. Oh, that's free. You got it. There, all the dirt's off. You ready? It's not bad. Loosen the dirt up around it. So this tree actually came with a bag around the roots in a pot. All right. All right, we've taken the tree out of the bag and you can see it, they actually pruned all the roots off of it. So we're gonna set this in here so that the graft is a few inches above the soil. All right, we're just gonna pack down all this dirt around this tree as best as we can. So when you buy your fruit tree at the store, you really wanna buy a grafted tree. And you can see there's a 45 degree cut here where they've attached um, this being cherry tree onto a different type of rootstock here. And that's gonna make this a semi-dwarf or a dwarf tree. So if there's not a graft on the tree, it's gonna be a standard size tree and it may be close to 10 years before you get fruit. And that's why you want a dwarf or a semi-dwarf because you're gonna get fruit a lot quicker. So this tree, I don't think it's actually big enough that I need to support it since it's so short, but I am gonna put a cage around it and that's gonna help protect it from the deer. And once this gets big enough, give it a couple years, we'll take the cage off. So this here is a Rome apple tree. This is one of the original trees in our orchard. And you can tell it's just, it's just not as big as the other trees, a lot of the other trees in the orchard. Um, and two years ago, it got fire blight. And I started having to cut away all the limbs that had blight and then finally, and I had to treat the tree as well. And what happened was, is this side of the trunk is dying. It's all black, it's, it's got fungus growing on the tree and it's extended up to this branch. So really like this whole side, this is all gonna die. The only thing that's gonna be left is this. 
but since half the trunk is dead as well, I'm just delaying the inevitable. This is gonna end up dying. It may take a year or two, but it's gonna finally die. So I'm just gonna tear this one out and we're putting a Fuji apple in its place. It definitely rot inside of there. Oops. I'm pretty sure I found a root. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Let me hit this one. There's a root under there somewhere. You might have to pull it back for me now. <laughs> How am I going to chop this? <laughs> You fell on your butt. Yeah, it's gone. You got her now. Yeah. So here's our Fuji apple tree. Let's see if we can get that out of there. I'm gonna break this up a little bit so that the roots will spread out. There we go. Just gotta make sure the graft is above the ground by a few inches, preferably. All right, just need to stomp that down. Yeah. Watch your got my, <laughs> I thought you were gonna get my hand there for a minute. Well, this one's tall enough, I'm gonna go ahead and support it with some stakes and tie it back. So I usually just use some wire. This is some electric fence wire and then an old piece of tubing or garden hose will work. And then we'll just tie that around the tree. And then I just tie it back to one of these fence posts or stakes, whatever you use. Yeah, this is an excellent job for a bad garden hose. Cut it up and use it for this. Get the tree straight. Tie it back. And there we go, it's supported in three directions. This one's tall enough for about need two people to put the cage on. So this is just concrete reinforcement wire that we're using for a cage. You could just use any type of fencing or whatever you got on hand just to keep the deer from rubbing on it. So like I said, I've been working on pruning the orchard. So I typically only use like three tools. Um, one is just gonna be your regular bypass pruners and I can get anything that I can reach with that, anything that's probably a half inch and smaller. And then this is probably my real go-to tool is these loppers. Now a lot of people don't like loppers because they don't make the cleanest cut in the world, but they are like a big set of bypass pruners. And I basically try to prune everything as high as I can reach it so that I can actually take so it's not as hard to, to get the fruit later on. So I've pruned this one here pretty hard. You can probably see that. It was one of the biggest trees in our orchard. Now it looks about the skinniest. And then the other thing, I always use some kind of a saw. I always use like a cheap camp saw. I finally bought, um, this is a silky saw. I know everybody talks about these. So I bought like a silky pruning saw and this thing has worked really good. And uh, I'm using that this year. But uh, those are the three tools that I typically use. If I don't prune them, as low as this, next year I'll be pruning with like a pole saw or like a pole trimmer just to be able to keep these, these low because I definitely don't want to be out here on a ladder trying to get the fruit. Well, I still have quite a few 
trees left to prune here in the orchard. But we wanted to show you this one. This one is um, our, one of our plum trees. It's the first one to bloom every year. And they're just starting to bloom right now. The, so in about a week, they'll all be opened up. This will all be full of flowers. And we finally got a few plums last year, didn't we? And they were amazing. They were so delicious. Yeah, so she's really hoping we'll get quite a few more this year. Um, this is an original tree to the orchard. It's been one of the ones, there's a few trees here in the orchard that just haven't really put on much fruit. And this is one of them. So hopefully it's gonna start putting on quite a few more. Mm -hmm. So we, we got a Fuji apple planted today, your favorite. Yeah. We had one of them die with the fire blight a couple years ago. So, and it was a, getting to be a pretty decent size when it died. So she's probably, you're probably happy to get another Fuji. Yes. So last year we never really made a lot of harvest videos in the orchard, did we? No, we had a major uh, hornet infestation. So every single time I tried to come into the orchard, they attacked me and chased me out. I mean, there were thousands of them and we never could find a nest anywhere. Um, so we definitely have to do something this year because we wasted so much fruit, it was sad. Yeah, so you, um, so she, you identified them as bald face hornets, which is actually a hornet that's actually white and black. Mm -hmm. um, there's several other bees and stuff in here, but I didn't realize hornets ate fruit and they were eating all our apples and stuff. Yeah, I mean, they had like burrowed inside all the peaches. So even if you did manage to run into the orchard, which is what I would do, run in and grab some and run out, uh, a lot of times they were inside the fruit, so. Yeah, you're afraid to pick anything because it might have a hornet inside of it. So we could only come out when it was like after dark or when it was raining it was the only time we could really get out here. And they just, they really devastated our, we had quite a bit of fruit out here. Yeah. But we were, it was just swarming with yeah, hornets. Yeah, it was terrible. So hopefully we won't have that problem last year. We don't really treat, you know, the orchard for bugs or anything because uh, we don't want to kill bees. Or anything like that so um, not really sure what the fix is for that hopefully we don't have that same problem again I'm afraid now that they know this fruits here they're gonna keep coming back well I had a, a neighbor friend told me that she put up she had an issue last year and she put up a paper bag full of like Walmart sacks and hung it from a tree so that it looked like a nest like one of their paper nests and she didn't have any issues after that yeah I, I did look for paper nests around here to see if I could even find where those hornets were coming from. I've never, I've never seen one around. But yeah, we may try that. Maybe we'll try some, some paper bags uh, mm -hmm. to make it look like a hornet's nest. Maybe we can try something else. If, you have, if you've ever heard of that, a hornet's nest, or a hornet swarming an orchard, uh, what can you do to prevent that or to keep them away? Let us know in the comments down below. But uh, yeah, we were, I think we were kind of shocked to really that that happened to us last year. Um, and we don't want it to happen again, that's for sure. Yeah, it was kind of sad because we always give a lot of fruit and stuff to family and of course the animals and we save a bunch and we just couldn't do that last year. Yeah, and the orchard's getting old enough. I mean, we're still replacing trees. seems like every year we have something happen where we replace a tree, but we probably still have half the trees in this orchard are from the original. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, six years in, they're really putting on quite a bit of fruit and uh, we just don't want that to go to waste. Yeah. But anyway, I think that's gonna be it for today's video. I got quite a bit of pruning left to do. And uh, I think we got quite a few other things to do and it's a nice day. So I think that's it guys. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.